Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Brett and 9mm USA here. And today we're going to be bringing you a very interesting video. This is going to compare a $650 high quality 1911 versus a $4,000 complete custom 1911. You're going to see them. You're going to see how they shoot. We're going to talk about the differences and how they compare to each other being from the same family, right? So this production 1911 right here is a Springfield Armory mil spec version. It does have custom grip panels on it. And this right here is the highly acclaimed Alchemy Custom, full custom order on this Alchemy 1911. And it is the Prime Elite Hard Chrome. Absolutely gorgeous. I think they're both beautiful. A big price difference between the two. So 15 yards up front, guys. 15 yards up front and then uh, 23 and a half yards that way. Let's do three. It's a mess. Yep, missed a couple over there. It's okay, still running 100%. Yeah, it's okay. Alchemy Custom. All right, guys, Young Brody here. I think one of the most important things that we need to compare here in this video is talking about the fitment between a full custom gun and a production 1911 as far as the mil spec stainless here. Let's go over the slide to frame fitment. Actually, Brett Senior, grab your mil spec stainless so that we have two different examples to show here because we do have two of them. Brett Senior okay. bought uh, his most recently. Sorry, guys, didn't know that was going to happen, so I was a little bit away from the camera. Here is my brand new unfired mil spec. So as you can see, this is true stock condition as far as for the new mil spec stainless. You can see that these are the grips that come on it. Now showing this here, talking about how the gun is fit overall. Now this is the one that we've shot quite a bit. I changed the grips to these different grips here. These are faux pearl grips from Packmeyer. Really nice grips, so I like the way they look on it a lot. Breda Senior's mil spec stainless right here that has not been shot is super tight for a production gun. This is almost Dan Wesson tight as far as like how it feels. It feels like it's a hand fit gun. So again, here's slide to frame. Very, very little movement in the front. Very little movement again. Here's the uh, barrel movement. Barrel doesn't move at all. That's amazing. Now comparing that to my gun here. which we've shot a couple hundred rounds through by now. Built more like a Smith & Wesson SIG or a Colt, as far as having a slight bit of movement in the front and back. Now, how's the barrel fit, though? <laughs> the barrel is rock solid, has no droop at all to it. The quality of both mil specs is just fantastic, especially for the price of these guns. It's incredibly good. And that's why, even after I got to experience Young Breda's gun here, I had to go out and buy my own. I bought this during the pandemic, guys, less than 30 days ago. It was worth every dollar that I paid for it. Absolutely. Yep. Now comparing that to a full custom gun, a $4,000 Alchemy Custom Weaponry here. This gun also is built hard fit, I should tell you guys that right now. Um, I ordered this gun with a 1 inch at 25 yards guarantee, which Alchemy actually does test their guns too actual distance and you can see that's how it's shot here and here is the date that it was shot it's rob shawlin's signature so the gm head gunsmith over there rob shawlin does all the testing as far as shooting his 1911s that go out of his shop and you can see 25 yards right there beautiful so I ordered this pistol that way to have the one inch at 25 yards guarantee and that basically means that this pistol has been built hard fit so the barrel is hard fit the bushing is hard fit, and the gun has a tremendous overall feel to it, and it is hard to rack. Now, it has broken in a little bit since we uh, first shot this as far as its first range trip, but it is still hard fit, no doubt. Here's the uh, 
back of the 1911, how it looks, how it's blended. Really nice. Very high quality stuff here. Here's the mil spec stainless. Again, for a $650 gun, you guys, this is pretty outstanding. And here's Breda Seniors. Really good stuff. Now going back to the alchemy here, show you guys how it's fit as far as slide to frame. There is no movement. This thing is rock solid. Amazing tolerances on a custom 911 here. No movement in the front either. <laughs> as if that barrel's gonna move. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, this thing is super tight, you guys. And actually this, this 1911 is so tight that sometimes it doesn't want to go all the way into battery, as you can see right here. So I have to press on it a little bit just because this gun has to be broken in more than this to be able to activate the safety, okay? So that's something that you might experience on a super high-end 1911, such as this Alchemy Custom Weapon Marine Hard Chrome. So the Hard Chrome is what's causing that, by the way. That's one of the major differences between these type of guns, guys, to keep in mind, is these full customs have like a hundred man hours into them. Yeah. Everything is looked at and sweated about and put together by hand and every minute little thing, if it needs to move a little bit this way or take a little bit off this way or that way, everything is done by hand with these, where these are just hand assembled at an assembly line. And it's not done with all the man hours that these are put together with. There's a tremendous amount of detail. And professionalism is. with the high-end custom guy versus just your standard production stuff, you guys, from a company. But again, these mil specs are the best, in my opinion, Amberetta Seniors entry-level 1911s you can buy on the market. If you don't like the looks of the stainless mil spec, they also make the parkerized version, which comes in at a price point of about $100 less. So it's even less expensive than this, coming in around $545. For a 1911 forged frame, forged slide, Match grade barrel, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's amazing, you guys. Amazing. So if you're looking for your first 1911, an entry 1911, I would look no further than the Springfield Armory mil specs. Or if you're looking for an upper end 1911 and you already have less bears and Wilson Combats and you're looking for that next one that you might want a special order, then this one right here has to be considered. Absolutely. An Alchemy Custom needs to be considered, guys. We've had experience with Wilson and Nighthawk and Alchemy and Les Bear, and this one is a standout. Absolutely. And back to it. Has a fantastic feel to it, dude. Feels very much so like uh, the ka-chunk, ka-chunk that I love from a Les Bear 911. Shooting at a target about, what is that, 20 yards, bro? It's 20 and a half yards away. There we go. All center mass. Let's go to the target that's 24, right? That one way over there is 23 and a half. First war mags down. Let's take the first shots with it here. We're already plus one, so here we go. It is a shooter. Wilson combat mag up now. Mag I just shot out of it was a stock mag that came with it. Flush fitting, all metal, Springfield Armory mag. good trigger on this thing. So moving on from the fitment comparison, let's now move on to feature comparison. And this is another big one, of course, because we're comparing a $4,000 1911 to a $650 1911. So get ready to see that, you guys. I think you're going to be a little amazed in the difference that you get for your money. As usual with this, as well as anything else, you get what you pay for as far as, you know, a feature comparison and quality. Now to start the feature comparison, let's show the ACWs front strap checkering. Now this is absolutely beautiful, you guys. So well done. You can see the bordering at the top here so there's no overruns at all. And look at that front strap checkering. 25 LPI. They call this the comfort carry checkering because of how it's done and the uh, horizontal lines on the side and then the checkering in the middle. You can see the borders at the top and the bottom are just beautiful. Now comparing that to your entry level 1911 here. You ain't got anything. It's just a smooth front strap, which you can have a gunsmith 
put some checkering on there professionally if you want to and you want to send it to someone to do that. But uh, again, you know, traditional 1911 here, how it feels, having the front strap smooth, it doesn't bother me at all. This is such a nice gun for the money. If you cannot afford a $4,000 1911. Or your budget just doesn't afford it, or you're not willing to spend that kind of money. You exactly. Want, you want a great, dependable 1911 that you can take to the range and enjoy, you know, during the summertime, then, you know, one of these would be absolutely perfect. If you're a big gun guy and you've got a big gun collection, then again, you're going to be over here. Wilson Combat 10 Round Magazine. off to the left. I'm going to go support hand here. Let's try a little single-handed fire, see what that feels like. Not too bad there on racking it. So moving on here, let's look at the uh, mainspring housings. Now, again, on the ACW, this is absolutely beautiful. 25 LPI, you can't see the pinhole because it is hidden and very well designed as far as this mainspring housing. And it is a one piece, that's right, one piece mainspring housing magwell to this thing. And look at how well the magwell is blended to this pistol. Comparing that to the mil-spec stainless having your traditional GI style arched mainspring that is vertically serrated. And there's the pen I was telling you guys about. Really well fit, again, for a production gun. I like the uh, arched mainspring housing. It doesn't bother me at all. But again, two different styles here and two massively different price points as far as that these guns come in at. And the last thing that I should mention that I almost just forgot, you guys, is that the mainspring housing on the Springfield Armory is cast versus the Alchemy Custom Weaponry mainspring housing magwell being made out of billet. So along with every part on this Alchemy 1911 being a forged part, and you've got cast parts over here in several different locations on these, there is also to mention the one inch guarantee at 25 yards. That is an upcharge here on the Alchemy pistol of $395, just to make sure we got that covered too. So I think an obvious thing to say here, guys, in comparing these guns is the Alchemy Custom runs very smoothly. When you're shooting it, it just, you can tell you're shooting a fine piece of equipment. Not to take anything away from these over here, these are, are more like, and I hate to use this, but more like a Glock in the 1911 world, where these are good, really good guns. They get the job done, but they just may not be as fancy as what you see over here on this end. And that goes along with the huge difference in price, right? So if you want the basic gun, you're gonna be shopping these type of guns over here. We want you to know that the Springfield mil spec, it's just a really great shooting 1911. It feels pretty good in the hand. It's got a good trigger. When you step up and you're going to the more expensive guns, you've got Dan Wesson in here and stuff, and then you got Les Bear, and then you move up to something like this. This is gonna be the pinnacle of the 1911 handguns out there. This is gonna be up near the very top. And if you're ready for that, then you're going to be shopping this type of gun. But do you need it to hit the basics? No, you don't. Less than $700. That's right. Another mag here, another Wilson Combat 47D.
shoot it pretty good left-handed. Yeah. All right, guys, let's talk about sights here. The mil-spec has updated sights for a basic 1911. In other words, you can see the sights when you look over the pistol and you're looking downrange at your target. It's actually a very good sight system. It's pretty easy to see for you to engage your targets downrange. So overall, it's pretty damn good. Is it going to glow at night and give you those uh, night sights? No, it's not. But basic marksmanship, daylight or low light or morning shooting, it's going to be more than enough. When I was in the Marine Corps, we were shooting, you know, 15, 20, 25 yards away with a basic bare bones military 1911 with a lot worse sights than this. And I'll tell you, by the time our training was done in the Marine Corps, we were shooting groups of, you know, seven rounds about the size of your fist from 20, 25 yards away. And, you know, that's pretty good shooting for an old 1911 like that. No matter what you do as you step up in 1911, usually your sight system is going to get a little bit better and a little bit better. Once it gets to the, you know, third or fourth phase there, you're looking at stuff that's a gold or a silver bead at the end, or maybe even just your night sights. And that's what you're going to end up with. And with this, this is a gold bead. It lights up really nice in daylight. And then for the rear, you just got a basic U-notch which is serrated at the back to help cut down on glare. And it does give you a very nice sight picture right there. Pretty quick too. So those are the differences in the sights. The mag here, two hand. Another mag, standard 47D in the black finish. Love these Wilson Combat mags here, man. All right, guys, continue to talk about features here. Let's cover the safeties. The safety on the mil spec is your standard style safety here, like on a Colt Gold Cup pistol. So a very nice safety, a very nice updated safety from the original safeties that came on the GI style 1911s. And listen to that. That is a very positive safety on a pistol that is less than $700. You guys, sometimes Smith & Wesson 1911s that are $1,000 plus, aren't even that good, or SIG 1911s, sad to say. So, again, what you're getting here for the money, and this isn't just one example, you guys, this is two. Absolutely wonderful, very positive, not easy to uh, deactivate. This one definitely needs a little, little lube or broken in, but uh, again, very positive, very tight, which is what you want your 1911 safety to be. Now on the Alchemy here, I ordered it with an ambidextrous safety here. But anyway, so here is the uh, Alchemy safety. Again, very tight, very positive. It's not going to accidentally go off or accidentally go on. Very good high quality stuff here, you guys. And you're right. I mean, guys, we have 60... 1911 videos up on our channel. I think we have more 1911 videos up on our gun channel than any other gun channel that's out there. If you disagree with me, let me know. Just as a friendly reminder, hey, Beretta Senior, so-and-so channel has more than 60 1911 Make sure you videos. count them, you guys, because, you know... There's a lot. There's a lot. No, there's a lot. <laughs> there is a lot. And that, that's one reason I think that we can kind of talk about this type of thing and, and have some knowledge about what we're talking about is we've owned... We have the experience. Oh, we've owned dozens and dozens. We can talk dozens. shop for hours. Yeah, dozens of them. Anyway, I did want to agree with you and say that the Springfield Armory mil specs, both versions here, have a superior safety to most Smith & Wesson and most SIG 1911s. Or even Colts, honestly. Uh, sorry, Colts. sorry to say, we've owned, we've owned the SIGs and we've yeah. owned the Smith & Wessons, and it's not that they're horrible, they're just not like that. And don't even try to compare a Ruger 1911 to this, because that ain't even in the same oh, that's so good. category at all. They're so good. All right, sorry, go ahead. So anyway, ran aside, <laughs> moving on here. Let's go over the fact now that both pistols are utilizing GI guide rod assemblies. Put this Wilson Combat mag in here for right now to walk this back. This thing is tight. So yeah, there's the uh, GI guide rod assembly on the Alchemy Custom Weaponry. And look at how well that bushing is fit. Again, that's the attention to detail and craftsmanship that you get you guys with a $4,000 1911. Now here is the Springfield Armory mil spec. Put one of the stock mags that comes with the Springfield mil spec. Comes with one magazine, this pistol, by the way. And there it is again. GI guide rod assembly. Nice and knurled. This is more traditional as far as how most guide rod end caps are. And real quick, since we were showing the ends of the muzzle here, let's show that the Alchemy has a reverse 60 degree 
target crown muzzle here, and it is beautiful. Comparing that to your old school, traditional profile scene here on the Springfield, where the barrel sticks out just a little bit. Nothing wrong with it, just a difference, and something that you can customize on a custom 1911 when you're ordering it. Two-handed. Okay guys, let's talk about the triggers here on all three 1911s. These two are going to be the same. These are the metal triggers from Springfield. These are the short reach triggers. So they're both about the same size as far as pulling the triggers on them. You got that much uptake or take up. Let's do that again. That much uptake or take up. I'm at the wall already. And for a 1911, that is an incredible snap. One more time. Springfield Armory Mill Spec. Uptake. I'm at the wall. It's not moving at all. And it just snaps. And so that's technically a short trigger, which you've never been a fan of, and we actually love it on these pistols. I, I, I can't explain that. I really just can't explain that, because you're right. I have not liked these triggers on any 1911s that I have ever tested until I tested it on this specific example. And this one feels every bit as good as the one that you have. Guys, we climbed over this 1911 big time at the store before I bought it because I was purchasing it myself. It was something that I wanted to keep for a long period of time. So I wanted to make sure it's fit, finish, trigger, everything was to my satisfaction. And it is. Speaking of fitment, how is that trigger fit? How does it feel as far as side to side play, up and down play? And how is the reset on the Springfield Armory mill spec? So as you see right here, up and down when you're starting to move it, there's really next to no movement at all. Now, if I go side to side, I can feel just a tiny bit. You can't even really see it in the picture here. I'm looking in the viewfinder, and you can't even barely tell. It's got just a tiny bit of movement side to side. As far as reset, I'm all the way in, all the way back. It pushes it out hard. It goes right to the reset. I'm back on the trigger again. I've taken up the uptake slack out of it because it's that's how it resets right there right i was able to catch it and boom it's in that next round down range and both of these are pretty much the same they feel the same this one feels a little smoother because it's been shot a few what maybe 150 rounds 200 rounds yeah around there. so again here's this one the uptake right there i'm at the wall i can feel it i'm pressing i'm at about maybe four and a half pounds four and a quarter pounds and it breaks very well. Reset. Same thing. This one may even be a little bit better on that quick reset. And I'm right back at the wall for the next shot. Fantastic. Well, it has been broken in, so I expect it to be, you know, feeling really nice. By the way, you guys, both of these pistols, as far as the Alchemy Custom Weaponry and the Springfield Armory Mill Spec, are Series 70 1911s, so there is no firing pin block safety back here. So that is why the triggers on the Springfield Army mill specs are very good. Yeah, they're just not very good. They're, they're almost phenomenal. Yeah. They're really, really good. All right, go ahead and show the ACW. The ACW. Basically, you get what you pay for, which you expect, you know, just about a absolutely perfect trigger here. I'm going to have a hard time. I like to check it before. Oh, I actually got it apart pretty good. Okay, so we're good. We're fully forward here. Safety's off. Okay. So it's a medium pad. Medium and pad. And it is a it's it's a nicer looking finished trigger here, guys. The trigger itself does look a little bit nicer than what this one looks like, though it, this one does have a little bit of serrations here on the mill spec. Yeah. So there's the mill spec, and here's this one. On the alchemy here, it just looks like a high quality. I'm thinking it's aluminum trigger. Oh, they are. Both of them. Yeah. Just really it looks high quality here. There is no serrations here in the face of it, just so you know. But it doesn't really detract or anything from the trigger itself. So here we go. So that is the uptake or the take up. What is that, a quarter of an inch? I'd say it's right around there. You're at the wall. Uh, yeah, you're at the wall and I'd say about 3.75 pounds would be my guess. Just under four pounds would be my guess on oh, the trigger sure pull. Okay. One more time. 
getting a good look at it here. There it is, it's firmed up and it snaps at 3.75 pounds. Oh, Jesus. Okay, here we go for the reset. I had to take that off camera to be able to crack the action here. It's so tight. Here's the reset. I'm pulling the trigger still currently. Here we go. I'd say it comes out a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. It barely moves and it resets. I'm at the wall again. I was able to stop it right away and it snaps again. There's just no question. This is a phenomenal trigger. And again, I think that's what you would expect in a 1911 of this caliber. This is the top and it has a trigger to go with it. That's right. Let's cover the fact that both of these pistols are wearing aftermarket grips, other than, of course, the totally bone stock mill spec over here on the right. The Alchemy Custom Weaponry is wearing a custom set of lock grips, so if you're interested in those, go ahead and go check them out at lockgrips.com. And the Springfield Armory mill spec in the standalone video was wearing a pair of lock grips, but I have since changed it over to this pair of Pack Myers, just because I wanted to see what these faux pearl grips would look like on the Springfield Armory mill spec and they look terrific. I'm not going to be changing it back to the other pair of lock grips. We're going to end up reusing that pair of lock grips on something else, but these grips are absolutely wonderful on this Springfield Armory mill spec. And they come in at a price point as far as these pack miners around like $28. So if you're interested in them, go over to Lyman's website. I believe Lyman actually owns pack Meyer now or the other way around, but either way, uh, they're over there if you want to go check them out. Cool. Do a little transitions here with this last mag, another 47D. It's a great shooter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cover something that's going to come up in the comments section. Go ahead and head it off at the pass. You know, what could I do if I bought one of these mil specs and then had $3,300 left over over buying the Alchemy Custom? And that's true. You'd still end up with a wonderful 1911. You could probably buy an AR-10, an AR-15, and maybe even a shotgun to go with your 1911. So that customer is not going to be the customer who's going to be stepping up to this handgun, guys. So I think that argument is kind of moot. This guy over here that buys this gun, 98% of the time already has those other things. That's what I truly believe. This customer right here is usually not the same customer that's buying these guns. I think what we're saying is you're talking to two different customers here, but what we wanted to prove in this video is how many of these things are alike and how many of these things are different. And what are you getting for that big upcharge in craftsmanship and quality that comes over here to this handgun that you don't have on the others? The buyer of this gun right here is the same as most Les Bear buyers, Wilson Combat buyers, or Nighthawk buyers. They've already purchased those AR-15s, AR-10s, and shotguns. And they probably also, in my opinion, already have a couple of these. Whether they're the mil-spec version, the base version, or a Springfield Loaded, or a Range Officer, or whatever, a Dan Wesson, a Colt, you name it. I bet the guys that own these already own several of those. So that's my argument. It's not exactly the same guy making the decision. Is it going to be this or is it going to be two rifles in one of these? This guy already owns those. So if you're starting out, these are your starting out 1911s and these are excellent choices for it. If you already have a collection like mine, this is your next logical step. Yeah. If you want the best of the best, there it is. All right, guys, I think that pretty much finishes this video and our thoughts on it. Your thoughts may be different. Um, I will tell you, I you know own close to 100 uh, handguns. Young Beretta has a, a good collection himself. And we have experienced all these guns. And we see value in all of these. So it's not a this or that. It can be this and then that. I think that's my closing comment. You might own them all and be very happy. Or you might just own one of these. You will also be very happy. Or own two mil specs. You know what I mean? Do a wheel. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that.
All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Beretta 9mm USA, and please support us on Patreon as we are excommunicado from YouTube, and we depend on Patreon to help the channel stay up and running. We have new videos, and I'm going to be working the comments section of Patreon, trying to give you guys more customer service, more personal service to the Patreon account, because that's really what's helping us out and keeping us running. Thanks very much for joining Patreon. We appreciate all of you. And everyone else, think about joining us over there on Patreon. It's going to be a lot of fun over there, and that's where all the new material is going to land. We'll see you all on the next video. And remember, your Second Amendment is worth protecting.